We're here at Grand Canyon, my favorite place to hike, to talk about tips for older hikers. Now, if you want to watch a video that's solely a celebration of the joys of aging, you might as well turn this off now. You see, you can't power through aging. You need to work with it. This video is an honest exploration of strategies that help you accommodate the aging process and keep you hiking well into your senior years. When I was young, we used to have a multi-story home, and as a kid, I would try to jump from the top stair to the landing, which was halfway down, and it was a great game. Later in life, when I was in a hurry, I would take stairs two at a time. Now that I'm in my mid-60s, I put my hand on the handrail, and I take the stairs one at a time. Here's another example, a medicine bottle. I can't read it or drive safely without glasses. My point with both these examples is the body changes with time and we change our behavior to accommodate the aging process. And if you make such accommodation fall hiking, it can be more rewarding than ever. These tips are both practical and mental. And I'll start with some of the smaller ones and then get to the most important ones near the end of the video. These tips represent my personal experience. Some of them may work for you and some of them may not. Just think of this video as a self-serve buffet. Take the items you like and skip the ones you don't. The problems you have while hiking usually fall into one of two categories, wear-related and catastrophic. For wear-related, know yourself accommodate the aging process. I always recommend that you bring with you a small pharmacy. I have anti-inflammatories, anti-diarrheals, antihistamines, pain medicines. I bring ankle braces and a knee brace and so forth with me. I take aspirin in advance of the hike uh, because I have an issue with soreness of my joints. I do have a problem with heartburn, so I will take with me some medication. And when I have lunch on the trail, I'll take and antacid along with my lunch so that these stomach issues don't bother me along the trail. You need to know yourself. The tip is always be prepared, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. As for the catastrophic injuries, having good equipment and an early start help, taking care on the trail helps and we'll cover some of the ways to prevent those catastrophic issues later on. Here's another tip, go with what you know. In the first edition of this video, a commenter who was a runner said they had a saying, nothing new on race day. And I really like that. It was very succinct. Your hike is your big performance. Of course, in life, you should always seek new adventures and try new things. But on the hike, don't wear new shoes. Don't try new foods. Don't drink a coffee with twice as much caffeine that makes your head explode. Don't try a new electrolyte that may have so many minerals that it makes you sick. Don't try new clothes. And especially as I age, uh, clothes sometimes feel like sandpaper. You don't want to put on a new shirt and have it feel like sandpaper when you're out on a hike. And here's another tip. When in doubt, take the conservative route. Always hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Have turnaround points set and alternate routes planned. On the hike I'm planning, I have three options, easy, medium, and the hero hike. I'll make my decision about which route to take depending on how I feel when I get out on the trail. One of my sayings is, there's no substitute for experience. And to put that into the imperative and as a tip for the older hiker, it is use your experience. Here's a simple example of user experience. I bring along a temperature sensor. It was supposed to be 17 degrees this morning. In actuality, it's 29 degrees. I'll be able to wear one fewer layers of clothing on this cold late November morning. Use your experience. All suited up and just about ready to hit the trail. I have a saying, the older I get, the slower I get. And perhaps I need a corollary saying, the older I get, the colder I get. On the pre-hike hike yesterday, the wind was blowing and I started shivering. Um, so I've added an extra layer in my outfit today. It'll mean I'll have to carry it as it gets warmer, but uh, when in doubt, take the conservative route. A final simple tip and something that's an accommodation of the aging process is the dual headlight strategy. 
I've started wearing two headlights. It gives me a stereoscopic effect, better depth perception. I mean, cars have two headlights. Why shouldn't we? Um, additionally, there's an element of redundancy. If one headlight were to fade, I still have one working. Um, so once again, the dual headlight strategy, a simple accommodation of the process of aging. It's about time to hit the trail. Let's go. Whoops. One reality of the aging process is taking a few more rest breaks. And that's where the early start comes into play. The early start gives you time to do things like take rest breaks, time to stop and look, time to visit with other hikers on the trail, and you can still make mileage like you did when you were younger. Three miles in, first light, and time for another tip. The secret weapon of the older hiker is the early start. The early start gives you extra time in case things go wrong. It gives you time to engage in the strategies that make you a safer hiker. I never regret starting early. First, food break. I found that natural foods work the best. Early start gives such lovely solitude on the trail. Beautiful morning. The next tip is to be a friendly presence on the trail. Always greet people, ask for and share information. Uh, one time I was hiking, spoke to a nice family, found out the water was off at uh, Phantom Ranch where I was planning to water up and continue up Kaibab Trail. The information they gave me uh, allowed me to reroute my hike and have a good hike. A smile invites people to ask for information or for help, and I'm always happy to give help. The people you meet on the trail and the stories they tell you are one of the interesting aspects of hiking. Another tip, understand that other people may not see you as you see yourself. When I was younger, I had the, the presence to ask my mother um, how old she thought she was, how old she pictured herself to be, um, and she said 21. And at that time, she was well past middle age, and it kind of surprised me. But if I'm honest with myself, I think I see myself as being 21 as well. Therefore, it's a bit of a surprise when people see me as I am an older hiker. Uh, people will ask, how old are you? And uh, they likely mean it as a compliment, and, and I try to see it that way. But you do need to understand that people may not see you the way that you see yourself. Another factor I've experienced as an older hiker is invisibility. I'd heard about this and I really didn't believe it was possible, but it's happened to me on the trail. I remember one time going into Manzanita, some young rim to rim hikers came in and it was as if I did not even exist. Now, of course, I have a lifetime of social skills and I was able to make them see me, but the more it happens, the more I don't even bother. If these people have no interest in talking to me, I really do not have interest in talking to them. But invisibility is a reality of dealing with people when you get older. Finally, there's one other factor that I find, and I call it dinosaur syndrome. Uh, I'm an older hiker. I'm extraordinarily slow going downhill, but when I go uphill, I maintain a pretty good pace. But sometimes people will be resting on the trail. They jump right out in front of me um, to, uh, uh, to not get behind the dinosaur. Uh, so uh, one thing you might experience is the same kind of dinosaur syndrome, where people expect that you are extraordinarily slow, even at times when you're not. It's a little bit funny. In contrast to the younger people who may treat you as if you're invisible, do rely on your new in-group seniors. They tend to have similar values and similar schedules uh, and are often a valuable source of information and support and friendship out on the trail. The final tip that involves people is not involving people. Stop and enjoy the solitude. When I was working, I, I hired a guy who was a smoker and we would drive along two lane roads uh, in a rural state and he would have to stop and smoke. And uh, we would pull over, he would smoke his cigarette and I would just stop and enjoy the solitude. And it was really the first time in my life I ever did that. I've lived my life both literally and figuratively going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. And it is refreshing now to learn to stop. I stop, I take three breaths, I look around. Remember, an advantage of being an older hiker is having more time and having that early start 
take advantage of that. The next tip is get the equipment you need and deserve. Shoes in particular. By the time you're 50, 50% 50 of the fat on the heel of your foot has gone. The muscles weaken, the bones spread. A good shoe is essential for safety and comfort on the trail. I like to wear a mid shoe for ankle support. These are a maximal cushion with a rock plate. They work out very well. Equipment does not need to be expensive necessarily though. These shoes were $126 on sale. Holes were $20 when I bought them. The backpack I used was $90. Shirt and pants, $20 each. All told, the equipment I'm using, $300. If you amortize that over a year, it's $25 a month. And most of this equipment goes on for years and years, other than the shoes, which tend to give about a year of wear. That tip, get the equipment you need and deserve. The next tip is don't compete with other hikers and don't compete with your younger self. It's natural to get slower as the years go by. And this one's a tough one for me, um, but every hike I make, I, I move a little bit more slowly. However, I say to myself, at least I'm out here, at least I'm doing it. And I realize that many of my age mates are not doing it. You may be older and you may be slower, but at least you have more time. And perhaps the quality of your experience is better than those who rush through and compete. Stop and savor the experience. Don't rush. I, uh, I learned a lot of my tips from the School of Hard Knocks. Less than a year ago, I was running through here, making good time, uh, competing with my younger self, which is a little bit foolish. Had my poles up running. I asked my friend what the time was, hooked my foot on this rock, jammed my knee into this rock, causing a knee injury that still plagues me till today. Um, it's always good to uh, use hiking poles, watch every step, not compete with your younger self. Um, and I need to learn these lessons too. School of Hard Knocks. Most of us have worked our whole lives, and it's easy when you take up a hobby like hiking to treat it like work. But it's very important to remember we're doing this for fun. So I always tell myself, make it fun, not work. Take breaks, enjoy yourself. You don't need to push, you don't need to accomplish great goals. Have a good time. That's why we're out here hiking. Make it fun, not work. I do make fun of this sign at times, and probably unjustifiably so. 11 days ago, a guy exactly my age, hiking exactly the same hike as me, died on the trail about a mile and a half from here. That does give me pause. These hikes are a fun undertaking, but there is risk involved, and that's risk that I accept. How do I make fun of it? Well, you know what this guy's name is? His name is <laughs> now here's a tip that initially sounds a little bit silly but is quite important and that is watch every step particularly when you're fatigued it's easy to make a misstep and i say it to myself as a mantra when i get tired watch every step watch every step watch every step with all this beauty around you, it's easy to look up from the trail um, and see the scenery. And it's easy then to trip and fall. The tip is stop before you look. And a variant on that is when you meet an oncoming hiker, we've been trained to look people in the eye. And that's a great time for you to hook your foot on a rock and trip and fall. When you meet oncoming hikers, if you'd like to talk, stop and talk. You have the extra time from your early start. You're retired. Stop before you look and stop when you talk. You'll be a much safer hiker if you do.
Here's a quiz for you. What is the most common fear among young people? It's the fear of public speaking. What is the most common fear among older people? It's the fear of falling. Falls are the number one cause of accidental injury among older people and the number one cause of accidental death. The most important tip I can give you is to use hiking poles. For me, hiking poles are like eyeglasses. They're awkward and inconvenient, but I need them to drive safely. Similarly, the poles are awkward and inconvenient, but I need them to hike safely. A fall can end your hike and perhaps end your hiking career. Poles really serve two purposes. The primary purpose for me is to stop from falling. The secondary purpose for me is weight transfer to take uh, weight from your lower body and put it on your upper body. One final consideration for older people, when you use hiking poles, a light glove is often convenient so you don't abrade or tear the skin, which may have thinned on your hands when you're hiking. The most important tip I have for the older hiker is use hiking poles. They can keep you hiking safely well into your senior years. The next tip may be somewhat counterintuitive and uncomfortable for some, but that is this. Acknowledge your mortality, or to personalize it, you are going to die. Thinking about mortality is useful to me, first, because it's the reality, and second, because if you take that coin and you flip it over, the only choice I see is to live. Acknowledging that you're going to die is a motivator to get out there and do things. For me, hiking Grand Canyon is a bit of an obsession, and many people don't understand why I do it. Six and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer, almost a complete blockage of the colon, and it wasn't clear if I would live another day, a week, or a month. After surgery and chemo, there was a 50% chance that I would be dead within five years. When I was on chemo, I took the chemo for two weeks on and one week off, and at the end of each third week, I would come and I would hike Grand Canyon, rim to river to rim. It was the only time I got relief, because when I hiked, all I could think about was my foot placement and the progress of the hike. I couldn't think about things like cancer, chemo, and the miserable side effects. All I could think about was the hike, and that gave me peace. That's the explanation for my obsession with hiking Grand Canyon. It's a celebration of life, a celebration that I am alive. I'm still able to do it, and I get out here, and I do it. To me, acknowledging and contemplating mortality is a motivation to keep hiking and to keep finding new adventures. We've made it to the Colorado River. One of my sayings is, aging isn't fun, but it beats being dead. But the more I think about it, that saying isn't enough for me. What I want to say is I want to squeeze the best out of each remaining day. And hikes like this are an example of doing that. What a beautiful location. What a beautiful day. What a great hike. My recommendation to you is to get out there while you can. Hiking can increase your endurance, improve your health, and add adventure to life. You are a survivor. You have experience. So go out and savor and celebrate life. Squeeze the best out of each day. Happy hiking to you.